In my attempt to save the Raider Nation from absolute depression and despair after just one week of football, here's a video talking about the most positive thing to come out of week one against the Los Angeles Chargers, and that is the idea that Brock Bowers is already a top five tight end. Okay, that might be a little hyperbolic, I'll admit that, but there's no denying that he was the absolute shining star of the offense. Didn't matter how bad the line was, didn't matter how bad the running game was, whether or not you thought Luke Getze was calling a good or bad game, whether or not you thought Gardner or Aiden should have been out there. Brock Bowers was able to push through all the noise and negativity and lack of execution to already cement himself as one of the better playmakers not only on the Las Vegas Raiders, but in the National Football League. And before I get into the rest of this video, I just want you guys to know this. 70% of the people who watch these videos are not yet subscribed, even though they keep coming back for more. Our goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers, and we are so, so close. Let's make that final push. Hit that sub button and join the Patreon. The link is in the description below. It's also right here in one of the corners. It just popped up. It's a little card. If you go there and sign up, you get exclusive content. You get ad-free content. You get your name at the end of the credits because you become an executive producer of the this channel we just hit 10 members which is amazing let's get to 20 subscribe join the patreon and let's get it i mean think about it his first game in a new complex offense with people like Devonte and jacoby surrounding him the pressure of being a top draft pick people calling you the steal of the draft all the hype you have to block people like khalil mack and joey bosa run routes against people like derwin james and he had the second most receiving yards of any tight end after one week of football and look i know the takes are going to be well look he's great but it doesn't matter he's not going to win us football games because as good as he played and he could have played better we only scored 10 points so what does it matter if we found our travis kelsey right Here's the importance of Brock Bowers being as advertised and being every bit as good as we hope and think he can be. And this was the reason why this channel was probably the only channel that mentioned Brock Bowers as a real possibility draft night. And yes, I'm giving myself a little bit of flowers because I don't think anybody else was saying that. Now, do I think we were going to draft Brock Bowers that night? I didn't. I was hoping we did if he fell to us, if there was that run on quarterbacks and tackles. The reason why I was saying I do think we need to draft Brock Bowers is because in a video I made three, four months ago at this point, I suggested that one day Devontae Adams will no longer be a Las Vegas Raider, obviously. Whether he retires, whether we trade him, whatever, doesn't matter. I'm not talking about scenarios in which he's gone this season. I said by the time the Raiders have found their new franchise quarterback or a quarterback good enough to win football games and make the playoffs and challenge for the division, Devontae Adams might be at the end of his prime or slipping out of it, or he might not even be on the team anymore. And if that is the case, we are not going to have a number one option for this new dynamic quarterback who was leading our franchise to get the ball to. However, if Brock Bowers were to fall to us in the draft, we could do our best to replicate the deep threat Tyreek Hill with Trey Tucker and the slot tight end wide receiver H-back hybrid that is Travis Kelsey in Brock Bowers. So the idea that Brock can come in here and play as well as he has so far in training camp, in OTAs, and now in his first game in a hostile environment against a pretty good defense, that shows you we at least have a contingency plan if Devontae Adams were to request a trade at the end of the season, if we were to get rid of him in the offseason, or if in a couple of years from now he decides I'm just going to retire, we have that focal point that we could build our offense around. And look, it's not ideal to build your offense around a tight end, but the team that's in our division that's won the most games of any team in the last however many seasons, right? Three Super Bowls in five years, whatever it is, have made many, many plays and have made their money and their success and their legacy built around a tight end being the focal point that doesn't mean you can't go out there and find another number one wide receiver but if you have that dynamic all pro player on your team already it makes it a lot easier to surround him with complimentary pieces like trey like jacoby if Devontae is no longer here we can go get another 1b or two type wide receiver and now we still have that focal point in brock 
Bowers. And the best thing that I saw from Brock, again, is that through all the negativity, he was able to not only catch the ball, but to make people miss. He was chipping guys like Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. He was celebrating with his teammates. He was 110% locked in on winning that football game. And that's something that we haven't seen a lot. Not, not winning the football game or the mindset. We haven't seen our first round picks absolutely be slam dunks in a long time. And I had mentioned that if Brock Bowers was there, it was going to be the most surefire thing we could ever ask for. And I've seen a lot of people up and down on Tom Telesco already just with one game. Taking the layup in the draft is a lot more difficult for GMs to do than it should be where you want to trade up and you want to make some big fancy move or trade back because the guy that you wanted isn't there. Sometimes if the best player available is a player that's not even in need, but is someone that can transform your offense, that could take your offense to the next level, and now you have that number one, you have to take him. So we have to give Tommy T his flowers for drafting Brock Bowers in the first place. And I got to be honest with you, with Devontae out there and Jacoby and Trey Tucker, Brock Bowers had the biggest impact. Because like I said, not only was he running routes and not only was he getting open, and I think Luke Getzey's offense, the way he called plays, it kind of was centered around using Jacoby and Devontae on the outsides over the top threat, Trey Tucker, and then wide open in the, excuse me, wide open in the middle of the field was Brock. He stood out more than Devontae and Jacoby and Trey in one game. Now we will see the linebacker core of the Los Angeles Chargers isn't great. They're obviously clearly better in Baltimore. We will see in a hostile environment, 10 a.m. body clock, if Brock Bowers is going to be able to make that same impact. I imagine we're going to be seeing a little bit more of him and Michael Mayer on the field at the same time, more 12 personnel, because our running game struggled a lot. And I think if we can get the running game going, Brock Bowers is not only going to help us in that run game, we're going to need to keep him in. I think you're going to see Brock Bowers start to get some handoffs because they teased that in some social media posts, like, five months ago in OTAs that he was in the backfield getting handoffs, jet sweeps, all that stuff. We struggled on a lot of plays to get one yard. And I think, you know, whether that's Zamir White's fault or Madison's fault or the interior off offensive line's fault, we're going to see Brock Bowers being used not only to block people, okay, but to get the ball in short yardage situations, whether it's a bubble screen, whether it's a straight up handoff. I'm telling you some speed option stuff is coming. They are going to unleash some things. They were probably saving for division games or games later in the season right now because we do not want to fall to 2-0. Excuse me. <laughs> we do not want to fall to 0-2. And, and right now, if you got some fancy Brock Bowers plays just to get you two yards, a guaranteed tush-push type play with Brock Bowers, not an actual tush-push, but a play that's as successful as a tush-push, you got to bust it out. So I expect him to be on the field a lot more than he even was initially in the first game. He probably already got the speed of the game locked down. I mean, he played at Georgia. You know, it's not like he played at UMass. He was already playing against NFL people in college. And people were saying he's going to be a stud coming out. And he was by far the best offensive weapon we had. Not to say that he's already better than Devontae, but maybe they were like, all right, Rook, we're going to play you one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to double team Jacoby and Devontae. Let's see what you can do. And that might open up a lot more things because now on film, he was making a lot of plays. So I think the future is absolutely bright for our offensive weaponry once Devontae is gone because Brock can now take that focal point bull by the horn style. The last thing I'll say about Brock Bowers and comment below if you agree with me. The reason why I'm comparing him to Travis Kelsey is not only because Travis Kelsey is the focal point of that offense, which is what I'm suggesting we do with Brock Bowers one day once Devontae is no longer here. But he also just kind of physically felt like him, right? He was he was uh, faster than he might initially look. When he got the football, he's a slimmer tight end that can make people miss, but he could also put his head down and run right over you. And where Michael Mayer is more of that brute force and Darren Waller was more of that slim wide receiver kind of tight end hybrid. Brock Bowers is the best of both worlds because he's got that strength and toughness, but he's also sleek and he feels like a little Christian McCaffrey when he gets the football. And the idea that he's sure-handed, that he's an excellent route runner, that he could run people over, that he already knows the system well enough to make plays down the field for a team that was struggling to make plays. We got to utilize him every single way we can. So here's what I want you guys to do. 
comment below right now where is brock bowers in the tight end ranks where is he is he 10 is he 7 is he 3 is he 1 i don't think he's 1 but he's pretty dang good and i couldn't be happier that he is a las vegas raider so comment below your thoughts on that join the discord link is in the description below it's a free group chat we're talking during week one it's uh, it's right now it's a lot of coping in there but it's fun join the patreon patreon.com slash all aboard raiders for five dollars a month you get your name at the end of the credits you get exclusive content you get videos like this early ten dollars a month you get ad free content please be sure to subscribe it's free out there on the charts to you i love you guys and i'll see you next time